welcome to the Chan Cancer Joy Club. Here we are. We share uplifting stories here. We chat with amazing guests who guide us through cancer healing and beyond, and we spread that joy together through this club. So let's welcome on Grace, my amazing co-host. She is a hilarious comedian. She is a relationship coach, and she is a stage three cancer survivor. Yeah. So let's do this. <laughs> hey, hi. Good Yay. to see you, Jess. So even though I saw you before, but just for podcast purposes, let's just say, yeah, hello. Right? hello. <laughs> I know, I know. That's how all shows work. Like, hi, good to see you. You just saw me in the green room, okay? We did. We did. So fun. <laughs> I like, I like your aerial. Very beautiful. Thank Love you, it. thank you. My, there's a bunch of ex. Um, fans that are tuning in and uh, they love my aerial so guys mm -hmm. i put on aerial for you yes anyway wow. and this was my first wig that i ever had after i shaved my head so she's very special yes she is yes wow. she's gonna have like two hairs and i'm still gonna wear her <laughs> this was the first wig i wore out in the world and like in general so Oh, so we're like, like the first, like, um, first, first, yeah, the first time I decided that I was going to go out and about and be not at a doctor's appointment because I did wear wigs sometimes to those for fun. But like, this summer, I was like, I'm going to an event. Yes, yes, exactly. Now for doctor's appointments is the beanie. Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Oh, my God. I had a, unif a uniform. It was like jog jogging pants, a t shirt and the beanie it was always the same thing like oh. yeah yeah but let's introduce our guest today we're so excited you guys because we have an amazing guest i've known this lady for a few years and she helped me through my cancer healing journey by providing mental health uh counseling and uh, she actually solved my problem <laughs> and, like cut the crap grace this is what you do and i was like Wow, she's amazing, you guys. Yeah, she's great. Uh, join us as Dr. Frances Baumgarten shares her journey from cancer survivor to founder of the Center for Cancer Counseling, a story of resilience and hope. Welcome to the virtual stage, Fran. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure. Yeah, love seeing you again, Grace. Yeah. Oh, love seeing you too. You are so amazing. You felt know, like, and I didn't know you were a Leo. I didn't know at the time, but now I get it. It was like, listen, girl, get over it. Do this, do that. That's it. Okay. I was like, wow, you are very efficient. You know exactly what to say. I'm telling you, you're amazing. Because it was Thank like, you. yeah, it was like, cut the crap. This is what it is. Stop. Because, you know, some, I, I'm sure you have this, some patients or some people like, talk around and they just, you know, and you're like, but this is the solution right here. <laughs> just stop, yeah. right? Yeah. But I was able to do that with you because of who you are. So, you know, you have to really tailor your responses to the person. I mean, you're, oh. you know, because of your sense of humor and because of who you are, you know, I hope I gave you some space to talk about how difficult it was, but I wasn't going to let you sit there because you don't sit there. No, and I so, don't. <laughs> and so it was, I was able to kind of, okay, I can do this with her because, you know, I think I have a really weird sense of humor too. And so it's, you know, yes, <laughs> it, yes. Was a good, it was a good match. And it's stuck. Oh, it was perfect match. I love other Leos, by the way. I get along great with them because they're like, they speak my language. See, you spoke my language. You were like, cut the crap. Let's do this. Oh, okay. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> just listening to your jokes about men was, a, it was an easy for me with you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Let me tell you before we start. Happy almost Friday. Hi, David. Wow. I love David. He's amazing. Please accept my utmost respect for you two ladies talking about your ordeals. I wish you many years of happiness ahead. Thank you so much, David. He's such a sweet man. I love him to pieces. Yay. I love, well, uh, Fran, have you ever heard uh, or seen Grace's um, boy, her boyfriend cancer, the advice that her boyfriend cancer gave her? <laughs> she has a whole series. <laughs> yes, what my boyfriend cancer taught me. Yes, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's what it is. Yeah, we were very intimate. He was an abusive boyfriend, though, because I never asked him to try to kill me. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> very abusive. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I have a series, and uh, hopefully, it helps other people as as you do, friend. You help so many people, and I love that. Uh, you know, you decided. I, you know, I want you to tell your story, but I know you decided to help 
um, other people that are going through this cancer healing journey after you went through a very difficult time in your life. Can you l tell us a little bit about that time in your life? Well, I had been a psychologist already for a long time and I always had medical involvement. So I did my residency at Children's Hospital with the kids on the oncology unit. And I had, I mean, I was always in this world. So I worked at an inpatient hospital and if anybody came in with a medical condition, they called me. Um, but then I was diagnosed, I was in my forties and I was diagnosed twice. So first I had four and a half years of a hormone blocker that did not work for me. Ooh. And then I had um, lots of surgeries, a lot of chemotherapy, a stem cell transplant, and then radiation. So my doctor and I, you know, I have a very wicked sense of humor and I drove yes. crazy during my treatments, Some right? That, but one uh, night, I don't know, I just was uncomfortable. I wasn't feeling good. And the nurses were trying to give me a pain medicine and I just didn't want it. And so they call my doctor and they're saying, I can hear them because my door's open. She's refusing to take it and he's screaming at them make her take it, make her take it. And I'm saying, fuck him, I'm not taking it. Like, you know, this is what they had to put up with in the hospital with me. So my other, my other really crazy hospital, I mean, I have two really other crazy hospital stories. I wouldn't let them come in to wash the floor because I was in isolation. So you couldn't come in my room unless you were booted up and all geared up. And I said, I don't want that dirty mop in my room because it, my goal is to make it out of this hospital alive with that. <laughs> right. exactly. yeah. And that's not going to happen with that. So I didn't let them in my room, you know, for the 21 days. But my other funny story that I know you'll appreciate was on discharge. So my husband comes in and I'm there and my doctor comes in and I adore this man. I mean, he's just was him. And, you can imagine I drove him crazy. We had a great relationship. Um, <laughs> And so he gives us our discharge, my discharge orders. And he says to us now, no sex for 30 days. <laughs> and I look at him here. I don't have a stitch of hair anywhere on my body. I have, a <laughs> tube, I, I have a tube coming out of my chest. You look like a blow up doll because no. you know, that's, that's the port. And this isn't a port under your skin with a transplant. It's a tube. I, Fran, that's sometimes that's what people like. So <laughs> exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And my skin is like green from the hospital, right? Oh. And I say to him, have you looked at me? I mean, this is how blind as a man he was, you know? And I said to him, have you looked at me lately? Does this really look like a body anybody wants to have sex with? And my husband turns to me and says, I'm counting the days. And I like, crack up. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. I mean, yes. somebody doesn't yes. have glasses on in this room and it's not me. <laughs> That is hilarious. So oh, I wish I'll that your husband would be. Yeah. <laughs> but what happened is, um, you know, as soon as I as soon as I was done and out of the hospital, obviously, I, you know, I had a little bit of recovery time, and my doctor was driving me crazy. He said, "You have got to start to see my patients," and he said, "I've I'm, I've got like the living dead. I'm curing people, and they just can't get their lives back." And so, yeah, I said to him, listen, you just need to leave me alone till I have hair on my head. I mean, I can, when I was first diagnosed, I went to work in a wig and a chemo pack on. And that with chemo running through my system when I first wow. was diagnosed, I said, I am not going back to work like that. I mean, you've just got to give me a little bit of space here. Give me a minute to breathe. Let me kind of get back. And so then, you know, he drove me crazy enough where I started to see patients. And that kind of what happened is, I had to learn there was no help in the 90s. Nobody knew what to do or how to help you. Or... Right. So it was, it was on the job training. And as I met with more people, their experiences matched. I knew what it felt like physically to be in that body. And I knew emotionally what how that affected me. And so um, over the past 30 years, it's been kind of a really neat experience. That is and, amazing that you use that experience. That's so horrific for all of us to yeah. help other people. Um, but what were the emotional and psychological challenges that you faced during your treatment and the hospital stay and how did you cope with them? Well, I think the, the biggest during the treatments is that you just miss out on so much. I mean, the yeah. treatments make you so sick that you're really unable and unavailable to participate. So, you know, you're kind of watching the world go by and you can't, you physically from surgeries can't do some things. 
you know, you're ill and you can't go out and enjoy meals. Food doesn't taste really good. You know, all the pleasurable things in life get taken away from you. Yeah. You know, being intimate is really difficult, you know, because you, you smell funny, you don't feel good. I mean, it's, it's just across the board. And yeah. so, you know, and you kind of lose your position in the world, which is why I didn't want to leave work. I mean, here I am as a crazy lady sitting in my office counseling people with a chemo pack till one day I said, wow. Free, you are out of your mind. You know, I mean, this is like stupid, you know, but, <laughs> but you don't want to lose yes. who, you are, who you are, you yeah. know? And so I think emotionally it's, you know, for me, it, somebody once said, it's like being in jail. You're crossing off the days on your calendar. Yes. With <laughs> yes. That is exactly right. what it is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it was just about getting through it. You know, I just got to get through it. I just got to do the next day. And the days that I felt good on the cycle, um, I just would get up and do things. I mean, you just, you know, I refused. I mean, what I tell everybody yeah. is you need a bit of anger. I refused yes. to give the cancer my whole life. Yes. And I gave it its due. But so I, and I talk about this parallel life where you have your life and you're going along and then cancer comes and gets attached to it. Yep. And, and according to the balance of how much the cancer gets attention or needs, that's how much you get to be in your real life or not you know, what yeah. I call your real life. And so, you know, learning that balance and working with it is, was really what got me through. And, and the hospital I got through, I got through the hospital by watching the soccer tournaments that were on TV. There was the, you know, the soccer tournaments at the time and doing and, and fooling with the nurses. And then and during the <laughs> night when I couldn't sleep, I mean, you know, just to have them come in my room and we, I still keep in touch with some of them and we still laugh <laughs> about it. Yeah. They had never been introduced to some of this. I used to say, come in. This was way before that other show, The Gray Show was, you know, it was kind of like, <laughs> Grey's we're Anatomy. talking about the 90s, right? You know, I said, you got to hear this, what's going on in this book. So, and, you know, and, and I, it was really interesting because when I left the hospital, I was talking to my doctor and I, I was telling him some of these stories, you know, what went on. He said, Fran, you were so sick. I don't know how you did that. Wow. And then, then it was kind of like, yeah, I was. I mean, I didn't leave the hospital with those memories, but as soon as he said it to me, then I could remember. And, you know, you just get through it. I think the biggest surprise for everybody is after in recovery uh, because you don't bounce back. Yes. So, yes. You no. Know, so you've got your body to contend with and all the changes. And if you've had mastectomies and what's that all about and how am I going to manage that? And, Yep. And just the effects of the chemo, because the chemo causes a natural depression and anxiety. So then it's kind of like you don't bounce back. You know, it's 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 like, you know, I, I said to everybody when I was recovering, it's like somebody turned the switch off and I can't find it to turn it back on. It's like, yes, where is that feeling of alive and yes, and vital, you know? Um, so I think that's kind of the biggest surprise for everybody in learning how to work through yeah. that. Yeah. Um, is, is really kind of, you know, how do you use your mind? How do you use sense of yes. humor? How do you kind of understand what's happening to your body so that you can yeah. kind of have this self-talk and, you know, how does exercise and movement and, you know, what are the things that you need to do to, what I, like I say, is reclaim your body. When you're re-entering yes. the world, how do you reclaim your body? A hundred percent. Yeah. It took me two and a half years to feel a little bit like myself um physically emotionally psychologically and also fran um i don't know if this happened to you and, and jazz yeah. did you guys have like some kind of ptsd like i oh. yeah like i remember getting dizzy to the point where my oncologist was ocd and i'm hypochondriac she, she had me do mri of the brain apparently my <laughs> brain is fine but i was like i'm getting dizzy i might have gone to the brain so at least your brain's fine. At least yeah, my brain is, is fine. Yes, <laughs> and um, but yeah, it's that PTSD that they don't tell you about. Doctors don't tell you about how to eat after treatment, how mm -hmm. you're gonna feel, how to deal with your emotions, how to deal with your PTSD. Right. They have no idea. They don't tell you. Yeah. yeah. No, nope. nobody gives you any information, and it is, and the PTSD is across the board. I mean, it could happen when you're walking your doctor's office. This yes. soap in the bathroom can make you throw up. I mean, there's yeah. all these things yeah. that are connected, you know. And the other thing, too, that uh, some woman was just talking to me about, which was really interesting, is that 
you know, you have to you have to do this treatment, whether it's, you know, whether it's even if it's for some people surgery without chemo or radiation, it's just as traumatizing. Right. Yes. And you have to have all these people doing all these things to your body. Yes. Touching you doing all these things that you don't volunteer for. And so yes. that, so then when you, that's over, sometimes that initial reaction when somebody wants to touch you or be near you, it's almost like you pull back. Yes. Because you've been, you know, it feels like you've been violated in so many ways. Yes, absolutely. In a, in a small way, and Grace and I have talked a little bit about this, even getting blood drawn is yes. like, get it the first time. Otherwise, my body will, and it's not a choice. I'm not choosing this. It, yeah. will, shut, it will cry. It will shut down. Good luck. It, right. The veins, I have to talk to my veins. I'm like, please yeah. stay open and hydrate it because we need to get this out of the way right now. These people don't know because most people, like if you go to a cancer center, when I go to the cancer center, oh, mm -hmm. they can draw that blood in no time because they, they're used to people who had chemo, our veins get smaller. Right. Right? But right. when you go to a regular doctor like my GP, they have to call like 10 people and they bruise me all over and they don't even get a drop. Right, right. Ooh. Yeah, it's really rough. Yeah, it, it really is. I never had that happen before. I, I yeah. you know, and I only have one arm because I had a mastectomy. So, right. Yeah. So it's very traumatic. There's so many things. So what are the things um, how if, if somebody ended treatment, what would be your advice to that person in regards to taking care of themselves? I think everything you're talking about. So I think it's really it's really, I think, important to talk to other women. Yeah. Okay. Just to kind of normalize what's going on with you. So you kind of understand, because once you understand what's going on, you can kind of fix it. I think, you know, the other big thing is really movement. If you can move, if you can move, even if it's walking, I mean, exercise and movement, getting physically strong seems to be the one big thing that makes a big difference. I've got women that are weightlifting now after that are doing things that they never did in their whole lives, because that makes you feel empowered. And if you feel physically strong, you can deal emotionally a little bit easier. So I think that's one of the biggest things. And of course, eating as clean as you can. I mean, I'm not big on total deprivation or any of these really crazy. I mean, I don't know. Personally, I just don't. I, I don't. I don't think that that's going to make or break whether the cancer comes back or not. To tell you, I agree. Truth. So I wouldn't want anybody eating pure junk or anything like that. But I think, you know, eating a really healthy diet, but you don't not depriving yourself necessarily of, of things. So I think those are kind of the, the really three things. And then if you're having difficulty kind of learning how to do some of the cognitive stuff, how to think about things, how to talk to your body um, and how to just feel about life, how about, you know, thinking about the fact that, you know, you're here. If you wake up in the morning, you have a day to do. You know, and there's something in that day that's going to be good and enjoyable if you let it be, right? Mm -hmm. So no matter how difficult it might be or how sad you might be or what the difficulties are, if you can find that place of joy or fun for the day, um, it makes the day worthwhile. And so it's it's kind of, you know, it, it's really a good opportunity to, I think, I think most people after cancer and even during the time that they're diagnosed, start to really look at like what's important. You know, I talk to everybody about that. I've seen relationships that were good get better. I've seen relationships that were bad get better. I've seen others break up. It's kind of like, you know, I think especially for women, also you get to a certain age sometimes where it's like you just want things good and the tolerance for them not being good kind of gets smaller yeah. and smaller. <laughs> <laughs> don't have time for that <laughs> no thanks no the most important thing i think for me has been peace and joy but peace more than anything because joy always had joy peace and so anything that disrupts that peace needs to go yeah and there's been a practice that um that i've started just recently um thanks to i believe someone on tiktok Mm. Uh, and it's you wake up in the morning first thing you do go look at yourself in the mirror right look yourself in the eye say hi i love you what can i do to make you happy today oh i love that wonderful you know wonderful. yeah i love and, that and i did it this morning and i was like oh i feel it you oh know? that's exactly yeah. correct and you feel it because the body responds yeah. whenever you think in your head 
there are biochemicals, neurotransmitters that will respond, and that's the body response to the thoughts, and that's the communication. So that's fantastic. I love that. I'm going to okay. use that. Okay. Yeah, it's great. Back to TikTok. Thanks, friends. <laughs> That is an amazing practice. I love it. And um, also, I think gratitude is really important. Mm -hmm. um, I became so much more uh, thankful, grateful for everything that I have in the smallest things. Um, and, and, and I find like if I get stressed out about something because life stresses you out sometimes, I'm like, girl, you could be dead. Uh, you're alive. You wanted to live. Look at all the stuff that you have that's going on for you chill out, right? <laughs> so anxiety, like it, everything changes after cancer, like your outlook, I feel. Yeah. I would, oh, like, Fran, tell me if this is something you experience with your patient. I mean, like, of course, patient confidentiality, but oh, yeah. um, I, I found in myself that the more I, I'm just, I say yes to things that are pretend like, yeah, let's try it. And then if I don't like it, I'm like, okay, and I'm done. But if it's a longer term commitment, I'm like, you know what? I don't have to re-up. I'll finish this out and then keep going. Is that, do you find that that's a lot more common with people who have gone through this? They're just like, nope, I'm done. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Is this new yeah. for you or have you always been like that? Me? No, yeah. I, I've been like, head down. You got this. Make it work. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So, so this is real new for me where I'm like, I'll take a gamble. I'll be like, yeah, let's just uproot my life and try this. And- uh -huh. And I've, I've recently done that. I'm like, hmm, interesting. Not for me. Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. So going through the treatments, I mean, having to put up with all of that, you better believe yeah. you, you you have that. Yeah, I'll give it a go. But the confidence of I, I'm not going to stick around if it doesn't work. Yeah. A hundred percent. And, you know, I used to be like that on my dates. Like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to date this guy. He's like this. Now I'm like, uh, I'm not dating because <laughs> I know what's coming. And I'm like, really? It's just the disappointment and the heartbreak and the annoyance and all of that. I just, even though there might be somebody amazing out there, it's like, I don't want to put up with it. Um, but before I was, you know, like, like Jess said, like, yeah, okay, let's do this, whatever. I'll try it. And now it's like, I, I ain't trying nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> swipe left. My whole <laughs> dating life is a big swipe left. <laughs> <laughs> love it that's a t-shirt yeah I, know, right? <laughs> I should put it on my store oh my gosh it let us know if you want that t-shirt friends grace will make it, <laughs> it that's... oh my god oh, so right. um let me uh ask you how um does the center for cancer counseling provide emotional yeah. support and guidance to cancer patients and their families. If somebody contacted you, um, you know, by the way, it's franceplace.com, right? It's France Place Center for Cancer Counseling. Oh, send, okay, I missed a big chunk of it. Okay. <laughs> That's the whole website, franceplacecenterforcancercounseling.com. Right. I'm, I'm or, writing you it can, down. Or if you did Center for Cancer Counseling, you'd find us too. Okay. okay. And then what would, they show up at this website, what, what do they see? What do they need to know? So there's a lot of information so mm -hmm. that people can kind of just either learn or call us for an appointment. We are six therapists. We all have private practices. Mm -hmm. We all, none of us bill insurance. So this, there we go. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So um, the center is a way for you to get the same professional counseling you would get if you were paying for us in our offices for free. There's no charge. Wow. wow. That's huge. Great. because. Doing yeah. cancer treatments, we're all kind of broke because we oh, can't. Yeah. Cancer right. is expensive. Huh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, we're, right now we're doing remote ever since COVID. We've all gone remote. So okay. we can treat anybody in California from, you know, from one end to the next. We're only licensed in California. Okay. Um, and we're either Zoom or FaceTime, whatever the therapist has uh, mm -hmm. available to use. And we're treating, we used to treat kids, we're treating uh, mostly adults now. It's hard to work with kids on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as easy. I'm, I, I'm the one that deals with the children with cancer because of my experience. So some of those kids, if they're old enough, even you know, even the, the 10 or 12 year olds that wanna get on the screen with me, I'll get on with them. But I like the kids to be in person if possible with somebody 
So meanwhile, we're just really dealing with individuals, couples, and families. Um, we, you know, will deal with anybody in your family as long as you as the patient is also involved for the most part. Okay. So we, we like, we will so see like family members. Would be. Yeah, we can see caregivers, right. It's okay. harder to see the kids who has have a parent with cancer because mm -hmm. I like, I have groups that I send them to. I like them to be with other kids. Um, we right. definitely can see caregivers. We prefer to see everybody together if we can, at least for some sessions, mix it up. You know, some sessions alone, some sessions together. So everybody gets to kind of value the education, understand what's going on, open those lines of communication that are so kind of hard to talk about. Yeah, and we do have a Spanish speaking therapist also. Oh, uh, which which is nice. And she books very quickly because of her private practice. But at least we've got her for, you know, yeah. to, to put some patients through. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Any other languages? It's English and Spanish. Those are- That's, a, that's about it. Amazing. Amazing. That's yeah. huge. That's huge. What well, a it's hard to find a therapist that understands this world. So, right. you know, I just didn't want just any therapist and I wanted somebody with, you know, that had some experience in this field and then I could fill in their education for them since I've been doing it for so long yeah. because we treat every diagnosis. So the fact that, you know, over 30 years, I don't think there's a diagnosis I haven't seen. Wow. I know what that looks like different physically. So I know what that person's going to be more capable to do to respond to, because we have to encourage everybody to live. I mean, I've had terminal patients, you know, on a, on a couch and get up and go to dinner with their family because I told them they had no choice. They weren't oh. dying. <laughs> they were on the couch. That's you know, great. Grace, this is one of those things I can pull off, right? It's like, yes, yeah. yes. You're a Leo. We we tell people what to do. That's our thing, right? <laughs> if you can get yourself to the bathroom, you can get yourself to the kitchen table and sit with everybody. I so love it's, that. Right. It's, you know, but it's it, right. So it's, you know, it just, yeah. it, it, I've been very fortunate to have these people. We've only had turnover, I think in, I mean, we, we became viable in 2000. Mm. So I think in the 24 years, maybe I've had two turnovers where people worked with me for a couple of years and then went on and just did private practice on their own. Um, so people stay for a long time with the center. I think they really enjoy the work and I try to be very fair and try to take care of them really well. And, you know, and it's, it's just, it just feels really nice to be able to do this. Yeah. What a gift. That's well, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I know. Well, thank you for doing this because you help so many people and they, especially when you go through this journey, if you talk to somebody who's been through it, it's a whole different ball game. Like they'll get it. You don't even have to say anything. Yeah. Right. You don't even have to explain. So we have a, we're hitting the half hour mark. So we, oh, yeah. this is amazing. Um, thank you so much for being here, Fran. And, and you guys, if you are going, or a loved one is going through the cancer healing journey, uh, please contact centerforcancercounseling.com and they offer free help and they have amazing therapists and we all need definitely support for our mental health when we go through this journey. It's very, very, it's probably the most important thing, to be honest, in my estimation. Uh, mental health is more important than the physical part of it because the mind rules everything. So, um, but anyway, thank you guys for joining all the, the Xers. Thank you. We had like tons of people on X and Twitch Thanks. and Instagram. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, I'll put the, we can, you're going to be able to see it. If you didn't see the whole podcast, you'll be able to see it on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, both the Cancer Joy Club um, channel and the State of Grace channel. So uh, we will see you next time. Thank you, Fran. Next and one. Thanks, Fran. Thanks, Fran. Thank you so much. I love the name, by the way. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're part of the club. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right. Well, I'm going to let me, I'm engineering this. This is a no budget production. She's <laughs> brilliant. She's <laughs> Thank you, Grace. You're welcome. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.